Hey everyone, what I'd like to do today is show you the A10 or A10, I don't know how the company pronounces its brand, AI Audio Mixer, and the model name is UC8000. So the company kindly sent this out to me about three and a half months ago, and I've done a lot of tests with this over the last few months. I've actually tested this over three or four different software versions, and if I quickly jump over to my overhead camera, you can see the device itself. This is it. Quite plasticky, but there's a lot of features here. You've got effects, there's auto ducking, a lot of modes, a lot of features. Quite an interesting device. It's actually six channels because of the different inputs available there. So what I'd like to do today is talk about its features. I'd like to show you the device itself, show you what you get in the box, etc. And then I'd like to do some microphone tests to show you how each of these features work. And I'll show you the device itself and I'll show you the software that goes alongside the mixer. Now, they're marketing this towards podcasters. It doesn't say it in the box here, but on their website, they're calling this the Podcast AI Audio Mixer, which is no surprise given this big on-ear button, which they've got there. But this can be used by content creators. This can be used by musicians. It's quite a versatile little device. And I will say, you know, there's a lot of things I love about this. There's a few things I don't. But overall, this is a good mixer, and it is something that I can recommend. But... Like all mixers, you have to understand what it can and cannot do in order to make an informed decision. So let's move ahead and we'll see what this UC8000 is all about. So this is the official website of the UC8000, what they're calling the Podcast AI Audio Mixer. And this is a great starting point to learn more about what this mixer can do. It's got a list of all its features and specifications. There's sales images sales material, etc. But one thing you won't see here is the price. It just says quote upon request. Now, when the UC8000 was initially released, it was released at $277 or equivalent currency around the world. But most sellers do now seem to be selling it at around the $200 mark. So $200, 200 euros, and currently on Amazon UK, it's selling at 205 pounds out of stock as I record this, but yeah, that's the price it was selling at. So aim for around the $200 mark, and if you're buying used, obviously you should be aiming to pay a little bit less than that. Now, on this sales page, you can see that they are, you know, marketing this towards podcasters, musicians, but I do think this is something that content creators, YouTubers, streamers, TikTokers, there's a lot of features here that I think a lot of people who record video online would find useful as well. So USB-C audio in and out, and basically what you've got here is a USB cable, USB-C cable that connects from the mixer directly to your laptop or to your computer. But that USB-C is also an input, so you can use your computer as an input. You've got Smart EQ, you've got 24 voice effects, and you've got audio ducking, which basically just means that when you're talking, the background music will go down. And then we've got a description here about the AI Smart EQ, and that's where this AI part comes in the name. So what this does is you push the AI button, it will take a sample of your microphone, you just talk into it for a few seconds, it will sample your voice, and then it enhances the EQ, it improves it, so that an entry-level microphone will sound like a professional microphone. It just improves the quality of the input so that it sounds a lot better. Quite a cool feature. It is something we're starting to see in other mixers and other software, but yeah, it's, it's certainly a welcome addition. It's a selling point of the mixer. Got other options here, um, which I'll go into in depth later on, but one of the things I just want to point out here is that if your you know if you look at the actual device here and you look at all the different buttons here there's certain features here such as the compressor the noise gate you will not see any buttons for them on the device itself you just won't see them there that's something you have to you know modify that you have to use on the software so i'll show you the software later but there are certain features that you can use in the software that you can't use and the device itself but the idea is that you set it up in the software and then you can just you know tweak the important things such as your gain level etc when you're podcasting or when you're using the device but as important to know there are a few features that are not available from a hardware point of view you just have to tweak them in the software side of things and um, studio grade playback and recordings so 
this can do up to 24 bit 96 kilohertz. Um, and as far as inputs go, well, you can see them all at the back here. You've got two uh, XLR inputs, which are also obviously 6.3 millimeters. So these are mono inputs here. And then you've got your input three, which is TRRS. So this is a smartphone input, uh, but you can also put in shotgun microphones and different things. And that's a stereo input. And then you've got input output. Now, this is the, the connection, the USB type C connection that goes to your laptop, that goes to your computer, but it also acts as a stereo input. So that's your channel one, channel two, channel three and four here. And then input four would be channel five and six. So you can bring in the stereo signal from your PC. So for a game streamer, for example, you could use this input here, both channels, to bring in the audio from your game. So it's quite useful there. Um, let me see what we got here. Okay, voice effects, jingle pads, auto ducking. And we've got the voice effects, pitch, reverb, male, female. So a lot of different things you can tweak there. And I'll show you all of that later. Okay, so... The next thing to talk about is specifications. Now, I don't want to bore you too much about specifications. Um, you know, this is something that you can investigate yourself. But one thing to note here is the gain range. You get 40 decibels uh, gain for dynamic microphones and 30 decibels for condenser microphones. Now, that is kind of to be expected at this price range. That's kind of the gain level that you would get for mixers of this price range. When you go to the pro level, of mixers and audio interfaces, you tend to get 60 decibels or more. Like my Zoom F8, for example, can do up to 75 decibels. But what I will say is I've tested all my microphones with this mixer and I haven't noticed any issues as far as gain, as far as this being, you know, any microphone being too quiet. So from a specifications point of view, you know, unless you're using a really super hungry XLR microphone, I don't think the gain that's available through this mixer will be an issue. This is everything that you get in the box when you purchase the UC8000. Now, the first thing that I noticed was this USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable. Now, it's thick and it's durable. I do like that about it, but it is annoyingly short. There's just not enough length in this cable to connect your mixer, leave it on your desk, and then connect to your PC. Maybe it's okay with a laptop, but it's kind of impractical for any kind of desktop setup. Now, what I've been doing instead is connecting to my Thunderbolt hub. So this connects to my main PC, and I've used that as a workaround, but it's not ideal. Now, I'm kind of nitpicking a little bit. I do appreciate that. USB Type-C cables are easy to pick up. They're very easy to replace as well. But I just wish that the cable that they included in the box was maybe three to four times longer, at least. I'm nitpicking a little bit. You do have everything that you need to get going. And as far as getting going, well, the first thing that I do recommend you do is go back to the official website and download the on-air audio software. Now, this mixer does work with Mac and with Windows. It works with the 64-bit version of Mac and the 32 and 64-bit version of Windows. And you can download the latest version of on-air audio here via the Mac App Store and from the Microsoft Store. You'll see it listed there. Now, if you also go to the Support and Downloads page, you'll see it listed there. This is how I've been downloading it myself. And you can download it from there. And once you've got that on-air audio software, you can download the latest version of the firmware. And you can you know, ensure you've got the latest version and you don't have any bugs or anything like that in the software or the device itself. So that is what I would do first. Make sure you've got the latest version of the firmware. Make sure you've got the latest version of on-air audio. So the main thing, in addition to the cable, the main thing that comes with the device is this quick start guide. Now, it is just that. It's a quick start guide. It shows you the buttons. It shows you what each thing does. But I do recommend going a little bit further than that. I realize that you're, you probably want to get going. You want to just dive in. But I do recommend going back to this support and downloads page and downloading the user manual. This user manual is in-depth. It tells you everything you need to know about how this mixer works. At the very least, give it a scan when you first, you know, when you first get the device. And then later on, if you're unsure about anything, just use it as a reference. But this has a good explanation as to all the features of the device itself, the actual mixer, but also the software. 
So this is where you get a better understanding as to how everything works. And I've got no doubts that you will have to refer to this because I referred to this many times and under you know in order to understand how it all worked. So yeah, make sure you go and download this full guide. It'll give you a better understanding, much more so than the quick start guide. And once you do that, you'll have the latest version and you should know what's going on with this mixer. So I've switched things up a little bit. I've got the headphones on and I'm now recording using the Shure SM7B rather than the shotgun microphone, which I have positioned above. So I've owned this dynamic microphone for several years. I've actually got two of them. And this microphone is very popular with podcasters, with game streamers and with musicians. So it's a good microphone to use as an example with our tests to show what this mixer can do. But as you can see, Right now, it's not connected to the UC8000. It's connected to my other audio interface, but recording with this right now gives us a comparison that we can make later on when we are using it with this mixer. So what I'd like to do is just show you this hardware. I'd like to show you the inputs, the buttons, the dials, just to give you a better understanding as to how you would use this device. But before I do, I just want to quickly comment on the design. So this is... A plastic design but it's kind of hard plastic and I don't have a problem with that it doesn't bother me that it's not aluminium it's a little bit lighter because of that you know it weighs about 420 grams 0.93 pounds it's not too bulky I mean this is the size you'd expect for a mixer that had two XLR inputs it's not tiny either but I think this would look good on most desks and you can see from this angle that there well there is an angle from this angle but you can see that it's raised up here, like that. Now, what I would say about that is that it's not raised up high enough because, you know, with these inputs here, when you're adjusting them, you, from this angle where I'm sitting here, I can't actually see around the back here, which is a little bit annoying. I think if it was a little bit higher up, you'd have a better look at what's going on there. But I realize why they didn't do it. You know, they didn't want it to be too much of an angle, perhaps. But yeah, that is what it looks like. I quite like the design. So, just specs on the back there, just a little lock there, I think it looks like a Kensington lock. In the back here, at the side rather, we have two uh, headphone monitor jacks. So these are two TRS outputs, so TRS. So you can use these to, to monitor, two people can monitor, two people can connect and listen to what's going on, listen to their microphones. And here we have all the inputs. So like I say, you can see four inputs here, but it's six channel. And the reason being that this is a mono input for the microphone, XLR or 6.3 millimeter, one and two. So it's channel one, channel two, and then channel three and four because input three is stereo. Now this is TRRS. It's a 3.5 millimeter connection, but I was a little bit surprised that they went with TRRS rather than TRS. So tip ring ring sleeve is what that stands for. And that's normally associated with tablets and smartphones, whereas traditional shotgun microphones, etc., such as this, will use TRS. Now, this particular microphone does have a TRS to TRRS connection cable, so that's not a problem, but it is just something to be aware of. This is a TRRS connection rather than TRS, and they've clearly went for that because they're expecting people to connect their smartphone. I suspect that's why they went for that. So the last option here, another two channels, is input four. And this is your connection to your computer. This is how you record. And it's also the last two channels because you can bring in the audio from your computer. You can bring in a YouTube video, a game, anything you want. You can sample it and bring it back through as an input. And that works really well. Normally when you have an input like that, it only works through the software. But here you can actually select through and adjust things for that incoming signal. So if you have, for example, you're streaming a game, you can select four and then adjust the gain level right on the fly without going into the software. You can just change it. That's a really cool feature and it's not something you see on all mixers. So I'll just quickly connect this up. It might give you a better understanding of what's going on here. So I'm going to connect this up to my hub. There we go. It takes a few seconds to load up. When it does, you know, as long as you've got the firmware, you've got everything set up, you're good to go on your Mac or your Windows computer. So here you can see that mic one is selected and I've got 48 volts. 
And the reason I've got 48 volts is, despite the fact this is a dynamic microphone, I'm using this FET head for extra gain. But what you need to do here, when you're using all these features, what you need to do is select the input which is appropriate. So right now we're in microphone one, and anything I do, for example, mute, would be applicable to microphone one and not any other input. Now that is important to note because there are situations where you could maybe get caught out by that. Say, for example, you're doing a podcast. You've got a second microphone here and so your guest says they have to go away, go to the toilet, go somewhere else. You can mute their input. So their signal will be absolutely zero. You know, that's different from on air, which just eliminates the signal altogether. But this one here, clicking the mute will only be applicable to mic two. But if you go back to mic one, maybe you change a feature, you know, adjust something. When they come back, you can't see right away that they're muted. You have to go back, select input two to see that they're muted. It's not a deal breaker. You know, they're kind of working with the space that they've got here. But essentially, you've got all these features here, but they're only applicable to one input at a time. And you need to go through and make sure you adjust that each time. Just something to be aware of. So you've got your AI button there. I'll show you that later. We've got the mute button. We've got 48 volts. Now, the 48 volts and the end you have to hold these buttons in. Now, I'll show you here. Click it, and click it again, and it'll come back on. It's not just a, a, a one press, you need to hold it in. Now, initially, I was a little bit curious as to why they would do that, but I actually think it's a good decision to do that because, you know, if you've got a condenser microphone, it requires 48 volts, you don't want to accidentally push the button that just completely mutes that microphone. And that's what would happen if the microphone was not getting 48 volts. So it's quite good that you need to long press it. It means it's not you're not going to press it by mistake. And it's the sort of button that you push once, then you just leave it on for the whole recording anyway. So this N starts for, or INS stands for instrument. And it kind of works in a similar way to the AI option where it balances the EQ for musical inputs. So instruments, guitar, etc. So that's quite a cool feature as well. And you can switch between three, four, like that, and just change things up. You've got your mode button here, and that will switch between mode, reverb, male, female. When you're connected to the software, there's another option called custom. And if custom is selected in the software, there's an option there, it'll go purple. Well, that's the default color anyway. And then you've got ducking. So if you're playing background music, you know, maybe for an advertisement or something on your podcast, you push that. And when you talk, the background music will be muted. Well, it'll go down. It's not going to be muted, sorry. It will go down in volume a little bit. So it'll draw the volume down for uh, the background music and it allows you to talk over the background music. So that's quite a good option. So you've got all the different modes there and you'll see that later that you can adjust the mode. So for example, if you were doing a uh, reverb, this would adjust that reverb. Here we've got output. So this is the overall output, the overall out output for everything not just microphone one or two, the overall output to your computer. And then you've got your headphone monitoring. So whoever's, whoever is connected here with the TRS outputs, they can adjust their earphones to whatever level they want. And that's quite useful because, you know, if, if they've got different headphones, for example, they might find that the, the sweet spot is a little bit different for each pair of headphones. So that's good. But it's important to know the on-air button and the output level and the input level here. This is the gain level, effectively, for the microphone, for the input. This is the overall output level. And then this, you know, it goes no signal, and then it'll go back on. So that just completely eliminates all signals. That's, you're off the air. Down here, you can see all the effects, and there's seven effects here, and I'll show you that soon. And there's also a little jingle, which you can play. Now, these are pre-populated, so the sound's here already, and you can replace them. I won't show you this one just because YouTube is very funny about copywriting as far as, you know, playing music. They say it's not copyrighted and then you got a strike. But yeah, you press that for a, a background tune. So yeah, that's it. That's effectively how this works. It's a very simple device. You know, like I was saying earlier with the manual, take some time to, you know, read the manual, but also take some time to just mess about with the device. And once you understand how it works as far as switching between inputs, you'll quickly know why this is quite good, you know, as far as how it's set up. I think there's a lot to like here. Now, as far as what I like, 
It's, it's not something I can show you, but I found headphone monitoring to be very good. There's no latency. It's loud. I was very impressed with that. And it only takes a few seconds to load up, as you saw there as well. I think that's a good thing. And I like the fact that you can use your PC as an input. That's a very flexible thing that this mixer does that a lot of other mixers don't. So, yeah, that's a very good feature. Now, there are some features that this doesn't have, and it's a little bit annoying. First one being, there's no power button. None. You're either on or you're off. The, you know, as soon as you take this off, it's disconnected. But you can't leave this connected and just power it off. There's no option to do that. I don't know why they've opted for that. I really wish they would have, you know, gave you an option to just power it on and off when you, whenever you wanted. There's no internal battery either. And there's no real external battery option because, yes, you can connect this, you know, to a power bank or something, you know, an external battery or an external power source, and you could charge it using Type-C. But you need to connect this to your PC anyway because... This is another problem. There's no SD card. There's no SD card for recording. Now, that's not a problem per se in mixers. Mixers in general, if it's just a pure mixer, it won't have an SD card and it won't have an option for recording. But they are marketing this towards podcasters. They are marketing it towards musicians and game streamers. I think, especially for podcasters, you really want an SD card in here because you want an option that if there's any problem with your computer, there's any issues there, any issues with the recording, you want a backup. You want a backup recording, an SD card or something to record to. It's a little bit annoying that it's not there. I think that would have really have transformed this device, made it so much more useful to podcasters. It's maybe not as much of an issue for musicians uh, and content creators. I guess it depends on the individual. But yeah, that's something that, yeah, I really wish to have seen. So no power button, no SD card. Um, sometimes it's a little bit annoying that you can only see one input level at a time. It's kind of negated by using the software at the same time using your laptop or PC. I guess another option I would have loved to have seen was Bluetooth. It would have been really cool to, you know, just connect a phone or a tablet using Bluetooth. But th that's not an issue. Or, you know, it's not an issue. You can do that through input four here. So there's a few things to note there. Like I said, no SD card, no power button. For some people, they might be deal breakers, but I, I don't think it's a not a deal breaker for me, I, I think, for how I would be using this. But I do think if I was doing a podcast, I would prefer an SD card option. What I would like to do now is build upon what I've been showing you so far. So I've got the Shure SM7B connected to the UC8000. So what you're hearing right now is the Shure SM7B going through the mixer. And that's going to allow me to not only demonstrate how this microphone sounds through the mixer, but also let me show you some of those features that I've not showed you yet. I'd also like to show you the on-air audio application. So I've got the window here. This is the app. And you can see that mic one, input three, and output. You can see that the levels are going up and down there. Now, the reason input three is going up and down there is because I have this road microphone connected. So that is connected to input three. And if I change to input three, you will see the levels going up as I talk. That's, you know, the the levels there when I'm talking and you'll see it going up and down if I do that. And it's the same story if I bring this microphone up and I start talking into the microphone like this, you will see those levels going up. Now, I don't want to do extensive microphone tests with that Rode microphone. I really just want to demonstrate that you can connect a TRS or a TRRS shotgun style microphone on camera microphone. You can connect a microphone like that or any other input such as a smartphone very easily to the back of the mixer. So you could use a tablet if you wanted there, you could use your phone, you could use anything really and you can connect it into the back of the device. You could even connect another audio interface if you really wanted to but I'll leave that to the side. I just wanted to show you that that is possible. So I have the Shure SM7B connected. If I jump back here, you can see I've got 48 volts selected again. If I mute it, you want to hear me there because I'm muted and it's the exact same story if I click the on air button. So if I push this down just now, you will see what's happening with the levels. When I push mute, 
microphone one goes down, but the actual output would still be there because of other things there. But if I push the on air button, everything is completely eliminated. So when I push the mute button for input one, if the other microphone was connected, that would still be bouncing up and down. You'd still have an output. So that's kind of the difference here, but just in case anyone's confused about that. So you've got your mute button, you've got your, your gain level, and I can go up and down like that and just adjust it. And you can see it's quite nice. You know, it helps you see if you're peaking. It'll go to red if you are peaking like that. You want to get that level down. And you want to get it to a level that's suitable. And you need to do the same with the output as well. You don't want to be too hot. You want to get you, your output to the right gain level, the right, you know, level for whatever you're recording with. You know, it could be a dedicated audio recording application. It could be OBS. It could be directly to YouTube. Whatever you're using, just make sure that you get these levels right. You will have to play around with them. It is audio after all. So what I want to do is just quickly show you this AI button. Now, what you're supposed to do with the AI button is to hold it in and it will take a sample. So if you hold it in and it will start doing that. And all I'm going to do now is just talk. I'm going to talk and that's effectively what you need to do. You just talk into the microphone and you do a sample for the mixer and it's listening to my voice just now. It's listening to the microphone and then it's going to build a sample based upon that. And then afterwards, you can see it's there. Afterwards, you can see now in the software, I've got the AI button there. Now, if you select here, uh, sorry, I'm clicking on the wrong part here. Uh, yeah, if you select there, you'll see you've got AI, Smart EQ, you've got Medium, and you've got High, and this will change the aggression level. Now, it's quite hard for me to show you this in practice with this particular microphone because out of the box, this microphone sounds great. You know, you don't really have to do a lot with it to get a good sound from it, which is why it's such a good microphone. But if you were using AI Smart EQ, if you were using a kind of cheaper XLR microphone, you might find that you'd have to adjust the Smart EQ setting. You know, for one microphone, it might be low. For another, it might be medium or high, you know, depending on what was sampled and depending on what the microphone was picking up. But that is what, you know, how that works. You take a sample and then adjust the EQ to match the microphone and your voice. How effective it is, it's, it is difficult for me to see in this microphone. I think in other microphones, I'd maybe see a bigger difference, but that's how that works. Now, you've got the mode button, you've got the duck button. Now, I want to show you the input coming from the PC, and I want to show you the duck button. So like I said, if we use that road button there, a uh, road, road button, road shotgun microphone there is input three. So that was your TRS or TRRS input at the back. But if you go here, input four, that is coming from my PC. That's whatever signal's coming from the PC. Now, what I can do is go to my YouTube free audio library and I can select a song. And I can select, for example, this first one is quite a funky wee song. So, that's now played. That's really good. Now, when I was talking there, the, the music was still at the same level. You know, what nothing was, you know, preventing that from happening. But what if I push this duck now? And I'm going to push play again. So now, if I start talking, see whenever I start talking now, that music, that lovely song will start going down to a lower level so that you can hear me better. So in practice, if you're a podcaster, this is one of the coolest features of this mixer. It allows you to do advertisements, it allows you to introduce songs and talk over them at the start, etc. Very, very flexible option. Now, again, if this duck option isn't available, I'll start talking in the audio level. Well, it's going to be too loud. Now, I can adjust the background level. I can control it like that. 
they can see how useful that docking feature could be. It doesn't have to be a podcast. It could be game streaming. It could be music. It could be anything that you're doing. So very, very useful feature. And, you know, like I said, that's a feature that would be popular with podcasters. But you can see how maybe with game streaming, that could be popular too. You know, partic- you know particularly if they're maybe talking over a game section or, you know, you want to make sure that you're heard over a particular level. So really like that. And this feature is actually one of the reasons why I've had this three months because when I when I initially queried that feature, like, you know, using this mixer as an audio interface, I don't know if it was lost in translation, but there was a lot of confusion as to what I meant. And they said that it can't be used like that. But not only can this be used kind of like an audio interface where you can hear, you know, you could watch YouTube through your PC or laptop with this and just using that input for and using that as the gain level or the volume level. Not only does it work, it works incredibly well. I can see the attraction of this. You know, someone who uses OBS to record most of his videos, I can see the attraction of being able to just quickly on the fly adjust the volume of a YouTube video or a game or music. It's a fantastic feature. It it doesn't look like it's much, but I love the fact that you've got this fourth input from your PC and the fact that you can talk over it using that duck option. Very, very cool. So take advantage of it if you can. So what we've got here is the effects. Now there's seven effects here, and then you've got this, which is the background music. So if I push it. So if I move this to the side a little bit, I can show you the on-air audio application as well. So that was, and I can push them just here as just, you know, just the same. This one's like a buzzer. Wrong answer. Embarrassing. Like who wants to be a millionaire? So there's there's a little tune there, a kind of Hawaiian acoustic song there as well. Due to YouTube's very, very aggressive copyright laws, I'm not going to play it because inevitably this video will get, you know, got a strike. Uh, regardless, they said it wouldn't, but I'm not going to take that risk. The UC8000 works in the same way as other audio mixers and audio interfaces. You can switch between customizing things and changing things using the hardware, or you can change it in the software. And you could, you know, switch between those options at any point. From a hardware point of view, I think these dials work great. Very easy to switch between inputs. Very quick as well. And you'll see that there. And then you can adjust the gain level as you see fit. It's the same with effects. Play, pause, play, pause. Now, I've also found that using the software is a great option as well. And if you've got your laptop open or your, you know, your desktop, your monitor there, it's very easy to use the software and adjust things like that. And, and you know, depending on your setup, that's maybe how you would go. But there are a number of customization options that are only available in the software. So regardless, you should check the software to make sure you get things set up right. As far as setting things up right, like I said, you should update the firmware. There's a factory reset option there as well. And there's also a useful tutorial, which is worth scrolling through as well when you first get it. it tells you a few things such as recording effects, etc. Now... You can, like I said, you can adjust things with the the dial here that will put things up and down. If you prefer, you can just go up and down like that. Very easy to do so. But the additional thing that you've got in the software here is this cog settings menu. Now you've got the AI Smart EQ down the bottom, you've got modes there, and then you've got compressor. And a compressor is incredibly useful because what it will do, it will take your wavelength and it will compress the signal. And this will reduce the odds of you peaking, but it will also bring out bring up those low sounds at the bottom. So if you're using a microphone where you're kind of talking away from the microphone like that, and then you come back, the compressor will help raise that signal so that, you know, you don't have to be so close to the microphone all the time. You can be a little bit further back and the compressor will raise it up. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the optimal settings are because it's different for every application, every mixer and every microphone. You know, some people say use three to one, two to one. Other people say, you know, go higher or lower. If you use the the ratio and the tack and the release and, you, and the settings are too aggressive, then it, 
um, you know, a multiband compressor can make your your sound, make your microphone sound really, really bad. But if you get it setting, you know, if you get the settings right, it can sound very good and it can greatly improve your audio and it can make it sound a lot more professional. So uh, it's great to see the compressor option there. Once you've got it set up, don't touch it, don't adjust it too much. You know, you know, it's kind of get it, get the right balance, then move on. But yeah, it's a great feature and it's something that I'm glad is in this mixer. So like I was saying, the, the effects, you can customize these. You saw that in the tutorial there. And there's a lot of different options here, even just from like, you know, these are all defaulted to green. But you can change a lot of things here. You can change, like say number three, for example, you can change that from an X, make it a little smiley face like that. And you can change it to blue. So when you push it, it's a horrible sound out, but now it's blue rather than green. Now you can change it also so when you press it, it's play then stop, loop then stop, play then overlap, and you can adjust the volume as well. Now there's a download option there as well. You can download each of the effects or background music, you can replace them. So you can replace, you know, you could change one of these effects to like Homer Simpson saying something, just get the wave file. Very easy to do that. Now the op other option you've got here is to replace it yourself and record a sample. Now, I found myself being very bad at this, just getting the timing right. But what you do is you hold the effects button down for three seconds, like that. It goes like that. It's now in record mode now. So what I can do now is, this is me recording, this is me recording. So hold it for three seconds, push it into record mode, and then just push it again, and it records, push it again, and it stops. So now if I push three, this is me recording, this is me recording. Now, that's very, very easy to use. It's a great feature and it's something which, depending on how you record in streams, this could be a, you know, a fantastic option for you for recording different things. But one thing to note is there is no easy way to quickly reset that back. So if you change an effect that you use a lot, there's no easy way to quickly you know, reset it back. The only way I've found, well, I can discard discard these changes, but if you've applied that and you want to go back to the default setting, the only way I've found is to go back to a factory reset, like reset everything. And that will just reset all your settings, like the 48 volts will, you know, go off, etc. Another option would be when you get this, simply download all of these effects and just save them effect one, effect two, effect three, so that, you know, if you do re-record over something, just replace it, replace the clip, go in here like that, you know, you can download clips and then replace them and you can go back and replace them. So I hope that's something they add back in in a future version because those, you know, those wave files are clearly still there because when you factory reset, they're available again. So hopefully they'll add an option in the software later so that you can just quickly reset it back to the default button. But it works really well. It's very, very easy to customize. Very, very happy with it. So one thing I've not spoke about yet is the mode option. So hopefully you can see this here. We've got the mode option here, and then we've got the different mode options down at the bottom here. So the mode option here, you've got pitch, reverb, male, female, and all different colors. And if I go into the settings menu and I click voice FX, click custom, I now have a purple mode option. It's maybe not showing there, but that's purple. Um, can you see it? Yeah. That's purple. My lights are not really showing it great, but yeah, there's a purple option there as well. And you can really go in with great detail. You can customize the EQ as much as you want. There's different options here, echoes, filter, pitch, reverb. You can really customize things greatly here. It's pretty cool what you can do here. And then you can just switch between the different custom uh, presets here for the dials. It's very, very cool what you can do there. we we'll discard those changes. Okay, so mode let's look through some of the mode options here so i'm going to go to pitch so this is pitch right nothing has changed as yet but if i click here you'll see pitch and i can put the pitch all the way up like that but nothing's happening so far and the reason being i don't have mode there you go now it's optimized so now if i click like that the pitch goes super, super high. Now, it was disabled before because I had actually disabled it by accident earlier on, but you can do it flat as well. I can bring it all the way down, and this is going to adjust it like so. 
Uh, the other thing you can do here is obviously I'm going up and down with the scale, but that's what this dedicated mode button is. I can adjust it all the way like this. Now, for one reason or another, again, this is something I hope they improve in a future version. This seems to go up in half steps. It only goes up from zero to three. So if I do a full turn, it goes to three. It doesn't go to six. Like that. Maybe that's something they'll change in the future. Reverb. Let's take a look at reverb. Okay, so we've got the default option. Go to studio. I'm talking a studio now. <laughs> And we can go to room. So we've got to room. And we go to shower, chamber, hall, cathedral. So I'm just changing the echo level here as I adjust through it. And you can just use the dial here. Now there's nothing here to show you what those presets are. You know, you've just got just dots, basically you know, six dots around the dial. But you can just go into the software and adjust things there, adjust things as you see fit. Mail. So, we've got a mail voice, which I already have, apparently. And now I can make it more mail. How weird is this? This is the highest setting that's available that makes me sound like a male. And obviously, we have female. So now we've got the female setting. So this is how I sound if I... If I was to become a female. <laughs> so these are kind of silly effects, but there might be certain situations in game streaming, you know, podcasting, etc., where that, that would be pretty cool. Uh, and again, that's it. Pitch, reverb, male, female. But that custom option is available and you can change these presets. You know, you can do a lot of different things here. Echo delay. You've got a high cut filter, low cut filter. You've got pitch. Get reverb, harmony, amp, so you've got treble, bass, middle, gain level there as well, harmony. I do not profess to be an expert on EQ or adjusting things with EQ, but it, I'm, I'm really happy that all those settings are there. So that's the hardware, that's the software, that's how they all tie in together. In my opinion, this microphone sounds really good through this mixer. I, I really like the audio monitoring levels. I've got, you know, I don't need to use a headphone amp. and yeah, overall, once you get used to how this works, it's very, very easy to operate. It really is. You just have to, you know, play around with it for a while, mess about with all the buttons, mess about with all the inputs, all the levels, until you get to a certain level that's good for your microphone, but also an understanding of how you can quickly switch to use the features that you need to use. So there you have it. This has been the A10 or A10 UC8000 Mic Live 6 channel podcast AI audio mixer. It retails at around $200 around the world and I think for that price you get a lot for your money. I think it's a good mix between practicality and dare I say fun. You know there's a lot of fun to be had here with the different effects and all the different modes etc. So I've spent a few months with this and one thing I do think is that they've got the fundamentals right. They've got good preamps. You know, I've not had any problems with the microphones that I've tested. My uh, condenser microphone here, the studio mic, my on-camera microphones via 3.5 millimeter connections. The headphone monitoring is good. It's low latency. So I think they've got all of that right. And the, you know, the dials work really well. The buttons work well. The software is really good as well. So they've got the fundamentals right. I think if I get any criticism, it's on that annoyingly short USB Type-C cable. The fact there's no power button, you know, you're either connected or disconnected. I mean, it's good that you can connect this to an iPad, a Mac, or a Windows computer, but I really would have loved to have seen a power button so you can switch off when you're not using it. And I think for podcasters, it would have been great, to, you know, to be able to record to an SD card at the same time. But there's a lot to like here. My own personal preference in my own personal favourite feature, I think, is the PC input. I love the fact that I can pull audio very easily from my computer, whether it you know, be a game, a YouTube video, and I can start adjusting the sound here on the fly. That's something that would be very useful to me during a live recording. Very easy for me to do, you know, if I'm doing streaming with a game. You know, the effects and the mode options, reverb, not, you know, things that I would use, but I did like the, the multi-band compressor as well. That was another cool feature. So there's a lot to like here. 
few criticisms as far as what it could have been. But I think at this price range, you know, it, it's very easy to recommend. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've got a better understanding what all these dials and buttons and inputs are for. And if you've got any further questions, please do leave a comment below. Until next time, take care.